Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to check out a video by Sahil titled as Four Small Cap Indian Stocks Goldman Sachs had it recently. Let's come to the video. Hey everyone. Apart from keeping a track of domestic institution investors, I also like to keep a track of foreign institution investor. And one such FI that I track is Goldman Sachs. In case you are not aware, Goldman Sachs is a US-based investment banking and investment management firm with a history of more than 150 years. It is the second largest investment bank in the world by revenue. And Goldman Sachs is extremely bullish on Indian economy. Now it has been investing in the Indian stock market across your large cap, mid cap and small cap category. But in this video, I specifically want to cover the small cap stocks where it is bullish on and has added them recently in June 23 quarter. Apart from this, I'll also briefly cover the stocks that are part of Goldman Sachs India equity portfolio where it has added stake in those companies in the recent past. And few stocks that company has been holding for a very long time that shows that it is bullish towards those companies. This will give you a good idea in terms of which sectors Goldman Sachs is bullish on and which stocks are looking promising. Again, this is not a stock tip. I would strongly suggest doing your own analysis and then invest yourself. Don't invest blindly. All right, let's get started. So the first stock in the list is from Indian auto ancillary sector. It's Craftsman Automation. It's a small cap company with a market cap of around 10,000 crore rupees and Goldman Sachs has recently made a new entry in Craftsman Automation with 1.18% stake. Now I remember covering this stock in my previous video as well. Personally, I hold Craftsman in my portfolio and basically Craftsman is a precision engineering company with around 35 plus years of history that manufacture various components and sub-assembly for your automotive, industrial and engineering segment. Company has also launched storage solution where it provides complete warehousing solution with products like your pallet, then racking, shelving, then vertical storage solution, then automated storage solution and so on. That has immense growth potential due to growing e-commerce sector in India. In last five years, Craftsman revenues have grown from 1,471 crore to 2,980 crore and its profits have zoomed from 32 crore to 232 crore. That's nearly eight times growth in five years. Although the base was small and hence a high growth rate, company has got a good margin of more than 20%, an ROC of around 20% and a debt to equity of 0.79. Its cash from operation in FR23 stood at 566 crore. In fact, it's not just Goldman, it looks like many FIs are liking this company. Look at the consistent increase in shareholding from 3.5% to 4.9% all the way to 12.1%. And even DIs have added it in the last two quarters and weak hands of public have reduced significantly from 23.8% to now at 15.7%. The key reason is, in FI23, company has acquired VR Axion and diversified its presence into passenger vehicle segment and it was previously dominantly into your commercial vehicle. Then second in FR23, company has been entering electric vehicle segment in both powertrain as well as your aluminium division. And third, company is also expanding its storage solution with cold storage, multi-commodity storage and so on. Although the share price of Craftsman has jumped quite a lot in the last three years and trading at levels of around 4,500 and today it commands a P-E ratio of 40. But entry of Goldman Sachs at current level suggests very bright future for Craftsman. Although at current level, the valuation looks a bit stressed, so it can be a part of your watch list and worth adding in case of correction. Now second stock that Goldman Sachs has added in the portfolio is from electronics manufacturing sector. It's Avalon Technology, where it has added 2.2% stake in the company. Now recently I did an in-depth analysis on huge potential of electronic sector in India and key players in Indian EMS market and Avalon Technology was one of them. If you haven't watched the video, do watch it. Avalon Technology is a fully integrated design and electronics manufacturing service company with presence in clean energy segment that include electric vehicle charging point, battery management system, electronic dashboard that also has presence in solar segment with solar inverters, solar chargers, solar battery and even in hydrogen space, AC-DC converter, inverter. Then next in mobility segment, it includes air with multiple segments including pilot seat frame, crew seat frame, business class seat, smoke detector, engine parts, etc. Then in rail, it includes signaling system, pilot seating, tracking system, braking system, sensors, etc. Next is communication that includes 5G remote, radio head, antenna, etc. 
then it also has a presence in satellite as well as digital infrastructure like tracking system, fleet management and so on. It also has a presence in industrial segment including power and automation. In terms of financials, data is available only from FI20 where its revenue stood at 672 crore and have grown to 945 crore and its profits have zoomed from 12 crore to 52 crore. Kami has got a good margin of around 12% FI23. Normally AMS companies have lower margin. Then its ROC for FI23 was around 17%, debt to equity of 0.64, cash from operation FI23 has been negative. Now Avalon recently had its IPO in April 23 at 436 rupee and currently share is trading at around 600 rupee. In the IPO, company raised around 865 crore rupees out of which 320 crore is fresh issue of equity where 115 crore is for capex and 175 crore is for working capital. At current level, it commands a market cap of around 3800 crore and a PE ratio of 73. Although the valuations are a bit stretched, but Avalon has a small market cap and a small base, so it can potentially grow at much faster rate and that's the reason why Goldman Sachs has added Avalon in India equity portfolio. In fact, in June quarter, FIs have increased take from 0 to 12.47% and DI's take is up from 0 to 16.58%. Although promoter's take has reduced from 70 to 51%, but look at the sharp fall in public stake from 29 to 19%. Clearly, institutional investors are seeing huge growth potential in Avalon technology. Again, worth keeping in watch list and consider adding in a systematic manner. Now, third stock that Goldman Sachs has added is again from electronic sector is a recent IPO of IQ Lighting where company has added 1.1% stake. Now IQ Lighting is a leader in Indian LED segment with nearly 50% market share in India's functional decorative lighting category including your LED spotlight, then your LED downlights and a 10% market share in India's true blue decorative lighting segment including chandeliers, wall lights, pendants, outdoor lightings and so on. And the demand for LED light would continue to grow in India. Company's revenues have grown from 220 crore in FR20 to 330 crore and profits are up from 21 crore to 51 crore. Company has a high ROC of more than 40%, a debt to equity of 1.07. Now this debt to equity is on higher side but company would reduce it as company has recently done its IPO and raised 606 crore out of which 350 crore is fresh issue of equity that would be used to repay some debt and setting up new manufacturing facility in Noida. Now Goldman Sachs has invested in the pre-IQ placement with Anchor Investor at 285 rupees and IQ got listed at 38% premium on first day. Today it is trading at around 420 rupees and commands a market cap of around 3200 crore and a PE of 64. Again, PE is on higher side but it's not a right criteria to check the valuation of a growth stock. Certainly the future of IQ looks bright and worth adding in the watch list to consider accumulating in a systematic manner. Now fourth stock that Goldman Sachs has added is quite interesting. It's from premium car segment of India. Company name is Landmark Cars where Goldman has purchased 2.4% stake in March 23 quarter and recently increased the stake to 3.1% in June quarter. Basically, Landmark is India's leading dealer of premium and luxury cars where it offers cars from brands like Mercedes, Jeep, then Honda, Volkswagen, Renault and BYD. Now in India, the average selling price of a passenger car is around $13,000, that is around 10 lakh rupees. Whereas in developed countries, the average selling price is around $35,000. And premiumization is one trend we have all witnessed where people are moving towards better cars and willing to pay higher price for it. And this is just the beginning of premiumization trend in passenger cars in India. So Landmark car certainly has a bright growth prospect. Now company doesn't only sell the car, it's also into the after sale market of repair and maintenance which is also growing rapidly. In last 5 years, Landmark's revenues have grown from 1600 crore to 3300 crore and its profits have zoomed from 18 crore to 85 crore. It faced losses during Covid period but recovered sharply. Its ROC for FI23 is also 20% which is good, debt to equity is 0.92 and cash from operation FI23 stood at 71 crore. In fact, there is a huge buying from both FIs and DIs in Landmark Car. FIs increased their stake from 6.9 to 10.4 and DIs stakes are up from 7.5 to 14.3% and public holding has down from 30 to 22%. That's again a very positive sign. Currently Landmark Car is trading at levels of around 700. 
and commands a market cap of around 2800 crore at a pe ratio of 32 which is looking very reasonable maybe i can create an in depth video on landmark cars so if i quickly summarize the three stocks where goldman sachs has made a new entry in latest june quarter include craftsman automation then avalon technology and iq lighting and landmark car it has increased the stake by the way i am not sure how many of you are aware but these days i am super active on community post and keep sharing a lot of interesting content so if you haven't explored the community post do have a look now apart from these four companies goldman has also invested in gravita india in december 22 quarter with 1.6% stake and continue to hold it since last three quarter i've done in depth analysis on this company that has also accumulated jt lakshmi cement where it has increased the stake from 1.1 to 1.5 and then 1.8%. Next it has increased stake in Zensa Technology from 1.1 to 1.2 and then 1.6%. Next is Spandana Sputi where it has increased stake last year and continue to hold it. That has accumulated home first from 1.1 to 1.4 and now at 1.9%. I've already covered home first in comparison with Avas and Aptus Value Housing. Apart from this Some of the other companies where Goldman Sachs has increased stake in last few quarters include your Balrampur Chini Mill, then Raidgen Travel, then CMS Info System, then Sula Vineyard, and Kfin Technology. Finally, there are few stocks where Goldman Sachs is bullish for a really long time and holding from many quarters. It includes Google Das Export that I have already covered in my next multi bagger series. Next, you have Newgen Software, which is one of my top picks in the past and also part of my portfolio. Then it is holding Mahindra Logistics. Rosari Biotech and PNC Infra in its portfolio since a long time. Personally, I also hold a lot of stocks from Goldman List in my own portfolio that I have already covered in my weekly video series available on my website. In case you want to explore it, I provided the link in the description. Now tell me in the comments how many stocks.